Hey, I'm Jesse. Uh, welcome back. For those that haven't been tuning in, I'm here at the Wolfram Tech Conference 2017, just talking to developers and other interesting people using our technology in some really cool ways. And today I'm here with, funnily enough, I am here with Jesse. Uh, so Jesse's going to tell us a little bit about what he's doing here at the Wolfram Tech Conference, uh, specifically in kind of what he has over here for us. Uh, so, Thanks, Jesse. Um, <laughs> Uh, so this over here behind me or to my right is a pen plotter. Um, it's an uh, it's a older uh, computer, a uh, physical computer output device. It predates the inkjet printer by about 20, 20 years. Um, and it, before the inkjet printer was introduced, it was really the only um, efficient uh, and fast way of doing color uh, printed output. Like there's la uh, laser printers, but they didn't really do color uh, back then. And so unlike uh, a, like a printer that you have at home, which prints in terms of raster graphics, so uh, like rows, columns, and pixels, this is a, v a vector output device. So it, it moves a physical pen around on the paper, so it draws in terms of points, lines, and circles. So what you're did this come out exactly? It looks really this, 80s. Um, yeah, the uh, this particular model, the HP 7550 plotter, was introduced in 1984 and was okay. sold for about cool. uh, 10 years. Um, I, I don't know how old this particular uh, instance of it is, mm -hmm. but it's around 30, 30, uh, probably around 30 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what what exactly is it printing? Can you tell me a little bit about yeah, what you're? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so I wrote a package for the Wolfram language uh, that converts Wolfram language symbolic graphics into instructions for the plotter that can be communicated over serial. And then uh, as a layer on top of that, sort of as a case study for that package, I made a pen plotter photo booth. Um, yeah. So you so you can have a picture of your face taken and then there's just a tiny bit of Wolfram language code that vectorizes that and then feeds it into my package, which can convert it into the instructions for the pen plotter. Nice, so like an algorithmically generated selfie. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Cool. So, uh, can we check out how it works? Yeah, absolutely. You can take your picture on the iPad over there. Oh, this thing. Yes. Oh, oh. or do you do you do you want to see any, something else? Or? Oh, no, 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 no. This okay. is fine. Because uh, it'll go through like the whole yes. thing for everyone to watch. Okay. Yeah. So, how close do I have to be to the? Uh, that's that's skin? pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna take a picture. I don't want to look like Grumpy Cat again. I took I took another one before this, and I looked like Grumpy Cat. Um, but hopefully that doesn't happen. Okay, looks great. Let's print. Okay, uh, so it'll take about 30 seconds to do the vectorization, maybe okay. a bit more because the background here is, is pretty complex. Um, it's running on a Raspberry Pi, which isn't particularly efficient with the image processing mm -hmm. in, in Wolfram language, at least not yet. Mm -hmm. um, so once that, once that is done, it will, um, it will send those instructions over uh, over serial to the pen plotter, and it'll start printing. Um, right now, it actually has an eight an eight pen carousel, so you can use up to eight pens in the plotter um, of different colors, uh, and you can swap between them during during a plot. I'm just using one color, which is a, a red uh, ballpoint pen. Um, so when I talked to you uh, yesterday over at your booth on the other yeah. side of the basement, um, you mentioned that this uses edge detect. Can yes. you tell me a little bit? more about that function, if there are improvements that you know of in the latest 11.2 release for that function. Uh, I haven't heard about any improvements with Edge Detect. I think it's actually calling an external image processing library, OpenCV. Okay. Um, so any improvements, oh, looks like it, it's starting to print you. <laughs> any, any improvements are going to be on OpenCV's end, mm -hmm. um, but Edge Detect, uh, it, as the name suggests, it detects okay. edges in, in the image. Uh, mm -hmm. What it returns is not, it's not in a... Um, Really good format. It just gives you an image back where the uh, the where it's black and the edges are highlighted in, in white. Um, so I then use the function image value positions uh, to get the positions of all of those white pixels, um, and then I downsample that a bit since I don't need the position of every single pixel. Um, and then there's a really cool function called find curve path that breaks that array of pixels into a set of discrete curves. Um, so instead of having to draw a one single connected line, um, it breaks it into a, a, a logically selected set of curves, which you can probably see it um, printing uh, right now. You'll see, you can see it, it draws a curve, then it lifts the pen and moves to the next point and draws mm -hmm. another curve and just keeps doing that. And it's uh, very fast, as far as I'm, I'm relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. um, it's very fast. Hi. Uh, and it is drawing your collar right now, I think. My what? Your collar. Oh, yeah, I didn't realize that was going to get into the uh, 
like image. The another one that I took yesterday, which turned out really cool, uh, it, it was able to get uh, the vest I was wearing. I mean, the yeah. I, I was wearing a vest the last. Yeah, two days I've noticed uh, people with plaid shirts. It takes longer to uh, to print them because <laughs> it does the whole pattern on the shirt. Um, so, is that it's drawing your mouth? Cool. Um, and then uh, once that's done, I have an another thing I can do, another case study. Um, so for uh, some of uh, you, you or some of the viewers watching may be familiar with Wolfram Alpha's popular curves feature. Yeah, those so, are really fun. Yes, there are, so there are hundreds of uh, parametric curves that are modeled after the faces of famous people or characters or uh, Pokemon uh, characters, I believe. Um, and there, you can access them within the Wolfram language, and you can get a, um, a representation of them as a Wolfram language mesh region. Um, so then what I'm doing, since those are already in vector form and they're very high quality, I don't need to do any of that vectorization that I'm doing with the, with nice. the uh, images from the photo booth. So I can just do a little bit of transformation on them and send them right into my... Um, my uh, my package and print them out on the platter. So once that's done, I have, I believe, um, uh, do you have a celebrity you'd like to print or um, character? Well, I would love, I know the spot curve's pretty popular in Wolfram yes. Alpha. I would love to see okay. that print again. So, uh, <laughs> here's, um, you here's, mentioned, yeah. oh wait, that's Pretty me. good. Here's you. Wow. Looks like the pen's starting to run out. Yeah, uh, it's, it's losing ink a little bit, yeah. but I would say this is pretty, like, good. This is not far off from my usual appearance, though I do think I look a little spooky, but I guess that's just, you know, perfect well, it, for Well, it has its own style. It's kind of a little yeah, abstract. Yeah, a spooky style. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I'll dress like this character myself for Halloween okay. this year. Um, and uh, here, since you're... Uh, you chose Spock. I will start that, and since since it doesn't have to do, do the vectorization, it should start almost immediately. Yeah, I was about to ask you. Does it? Uh, I'm guessing it's faster to print. It doesn't take the full. Uh, yeah, it's faster minutes. to print because yeah. they've they've like it, it's been manually sculpted by right. a human, so they, it's not it's not like doing any of the background or any mm -hmm. uh, unimportant parts. It's just the it's just the important bits. So mm -hmm. I'll start that printing now, and. Drawing Spock. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna swap out the pen for my talk later. But so did you just come up with this, just like in your some of your spare time to make something fun? Yeah, I was. Well, I was reading about uh, pen plotters online, and I didn't find any any blog posts or anything about them being integrated with the Wolfram language, which is understandable because it's not exactly a um, very popular item at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, they're a little outdated. Uh, so, but I thought I thought it would be cool to integrate it with Wolfram uh, language's very powerful symbolic graphics uh, functionality that you, you can't really find in any other language. Mm -hmm. What are some improvements if you were to do this again uh, in the in the future? What would you like to see implemented, that, like integrated, as far as Wolfram language goes with this pen plotting? As okay, well, I um, there's some code. Oh, looks like Spock is done. Uh, let's, let's. Okay. That's pretty good. The pens, uh, the pen, the lines aren't aren't as bad. Nice. Now. Yeah, yeah. On my my selfie was much coarser. Yeah. Uh, these are very smooth. Yes, very curves. very smooth and, and it sharp. It looks good. Um, Just so, like I remember him. Yeah. Looks great. Uh, so. Yes, uh, so the there is some the the all the important stuff is happening in Wolfram language, but there is some Python code running on the Pi uh, mm -hmm. that communicates with the iPad that's taking the picture over Wi-Fi, and then it's sort of glue code that invokes the Wolfram language functions um, and pulls the data uh, back, and then it, it actually does the serial communication because there is a I was having a bit of a problem with the serial stuff in in Wolfram language, um, but uh, in the future I, I learned about at this conference there is now functionality for uh, talking to TCP sockets, uh, asynchronous duplex communication on, on TC, uh, TCP sockets in Wolfram language, uh, which I did not know about before, and I'm using to communicate with the iPad the WebSocket protocol, which is a duplex asynchronous uh, TCP connection. Uh, so if I had known that that was available now in Wolfram language, I probably would have written that part of it in Wolfram language uh, as well, instead of in, uh, in Python, which I, um, the, the Python ended up being... Um, <laughs> just stores the pen so it doesn't get dry. Um, so the, the Python ended up being a little bit messy and because it's n Python is not very good at doing asynchronous stuff um, at all and if you try to it ends up messy. Um, so yeah I would I would have done that in Wolfram language and I would have um, 
uh, the the serial stuff was a, a little weird. It was the hand the handshaking. It uses it does a very cool thing where it uses handshaking to only accept um, serial bites as it can actually physically draw them out. So there's just a small buffer there. But yeah, the handshaking wasn't working out properly with Wolfram language, so I had to do it in Python. Um, so if I could if I could get that working, I would be able to do this thing, except for the iPad, entirely 100% in in Wolfram language. Nice. Yeah, it seems like you came into like a lot of new like knowledge here at this yes, year's yeah. conference. That's cool. Um, well, thanks for taking the time to talk with me about this and yeah, show absolutely. our viewers like this cool vintage 80s printer do some really cool modern stuff. Yeah. Um, so like always, if you have a question about anything kind of discussed in this particular segment, just leave a question in the comments. We can't get to it during these live sessions, but um, someone can get back to you later. You can also go to community.wolfram.com and pose your own discussions. Uh, someone might have already had your question, so you can check for that too. Um, yeah, and thanks for watching.